All right, I got to ask anything. We're going to change okay, gears right, here. Let's do it. Um, got a really good question from Dina Smith. Thanks for writing in. Uh, she says, hey, guys, how do you name, file, organize your artwork and embroidery art files? How do you assure that all staff handles it the same way? <clears throat> SOP. That, uh, so that it stays organized and easy to follow. And uh, one last part to this. What is your preferred place to save and share these files? So um, I got an easy one for that one. So obviously ahead, the best place to, to save them is in Printavo production files. Um, other than that, I've got a shared Google Drive as well for other files that maybe not aren't finished files. All finished files, so actual output set files, those get uploaded. And I mean, I do separation myself, so oftentimes I'll start off with like the, the, the joke is always like separation working dash final dash actual final right so the actual final one three. right the actual <laughs> final one is the one that i upload there now i ran into the issue of i would have my own like naming nomenclature for a file and my business partner mike would have a different one and then when i was trying to go into our shared google drive to look for things i was like what what the hell's happening so i just owned that and standardized it and i literally made a printout and taped it on the wall behind both of our computers so that's how you save a file every single time so it was just a, for us, it's the, the work ID, the order ID number, underscore, the customer name, underscore, the nickname, underscore, output, right? That's, that's it. And every single one, a little longer than a lot of folks are going to like, but for us, it works perfectly. Always easy to find, always easy to, to catalog and get back to, to duplicate or anything like that. So that's how we went about it, and it's been working for us. So why do you put all those in? Is it just to make it searchable? Yep. Got it. Um, Aaron Draplin teaches, he does a class for our students once a year. And that's like the first thing he talks about is organized files. Um, and he says, you know, to create the directory and name it with the year first. So like 2021 underscore your project name. So whenever you start a new project, you go year and then underscore, and you always use underscores between words so that it is searchable. Um, but that way he literally went back and he was able to navigate through like eight years of artwork. Um, and he's like, if, you're, you know, if your files aren't neat, if your file storage isn't neat, how's your artwork gonna be neat? So it's like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have tight steps and things are gonna be nice and neat, make sure your files are super, super clean too. We store all of ours on Printavo for production files. That is the single source of truth for production files. Do you um, not do a Dropbox or Google Drive as well for like Matt's doing? No, Printavo does great. <laughs> yeah, like I'll, I'll use Printavo for anything that's a final, final uh, version of anything. Any working mm -hmm. files and stuff that's not really necessarily going into that. I might want to hold on to a working file as opposed to the output file. So that's where I'll store it in a Google Drive. Um, Got it. And if I, if I need to do that too, I'll actually drop that link in the production notes. Um, so if, if we need to quickly go back to that working file, I got that link right there to go right into the G drive. Yeah. I mean, personally, like I use a Dropbox and Dropbox connects with Printavo on like file picker. You just log in there and you can pull your Dropbox files. So personally, obviously I don't, I don't save anything there, but like the whole company kind of has the same, they have the same rhythm with how they're working on their project files. And then the second a job is going in, it's obviously going right in Printavo. Um, and I think the, the best part about that is every time you have a reorder, like digitized SEPs, you literally just search it, boom, there it is. Uh, and it's the easiest thing ever. Um, and you and have graphics, how, and which part of it's easier to plug onto it. It's sense. crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. So, Dina, I hope that was helpful. Are there any that other good, ideas? That was a good or... question and actually an overlooked one, I think, by too many shops. I'm glad, I'm glad Dina asked that. And, and that's why I, I wanted to ask, too, like, do you find most shops do that way then, Matt? Like, let's say, I'm not sure if Dina's on Printavo, but if she's just doing G Drive, you recommend putting it all in like that. So you've got the metadata to search through it a lot easier. I mean, I mean, in, in RG Drive, I do actually have it segmented by years as well, like Stephen was saying. Um, so we've got a year folder, then you go in that year folder, and then they're all dropped there for that year. Um, and I just use that same naming nomenclature. That way I can search things easily in the drive. Got it. Okay. And Dina, if you're on Printavo, thank you. Um, 
Hopefully that helped. And feel free, guys. You can always write in at podcast at printavo.com. I think it's podcast. Producer Chris, is it podcast or podcast? No, podcast, singular. Singular. <laughs> at printavo.com. Get both email addresses. Hey, Just, this uh, is the...